Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Sesame. Amen. Glory to God. Senior Pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside, California. Amen. Glory to God. And we just want to say God bless you and thank you for inviting us into your home tonight for another round of Bible study. Tonight we're going to be dealing with, amen, glory to God, the topic of the discerning of spirits. Amen, glory to God. Uh, heretofore, what we've covered is the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. And so to complete the trio of revelation gifts, amen, glory to God, we're going to be discussing, amen, the discerning of spirits. Praise the Lord. And we just want to say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to have a little prayer. Then we're going to jump straight into the, the Bible study tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your for the opportunity to share the word of the kingdom once again with these, your beloved people. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing upon me, the, the grace to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that your people have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church. We thank you. Now, we come against any spirit, any foe, the foe of faith that would try to interrupt this broadcast. We thank you, Lord God, for our Facebook audience and our YouTube audience. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, those that agree, say amen. Praise God. Well, if you have your Bibles, amen, with you, we would ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Praise God. Amen. And we'll start reading from verse number 7. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me start reading from uh, verse 4. I like starting from there. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Praise God. Hallelujah. As previously stated, amen, glory to God, uh, we've covered, amen, the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen, glory to God. And we're going to be dealing with the third revelation gift known as the gift of discerning of spirits. Amen, glory to God. Uh, is worthy to be to, is noteworthy, amen. That of the three revelation gifts, it should be obvious now that the most important one is the word of wisdom, amen. Because the word of wisdom gives us insight, amen, into amen the purposes and the plans uh, that's on the heart on the mind of God, amen. Glory to God. Where the word of knowledge uh, really deals within the reveals situations that's in the past or in the present. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the, uh, in the discerning of spirits, amen, as we're going to learn, amen, glory to God, they, amen, they, they, they are discerning of spirits. Amen. So that's their, the, the realm of their limitation, the spirit, the discerning of spirits, amen, glory to God, amen, glory to God. And so, amen, glory to God. Um, as we go into it, you're going to, I believe we're going to learn some things, amen, about it that, that we didn't know. And I think we're going to, uh, have to forget about some things that we thought we knew that were in fact incorrect. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what is the discerning of spirits? Amen. Well, the discerning of spirits gives supernatural insight into the spirit world into the spirit world. Amen. Once again, the discerning of spirits gives supernatural insight into the spirit world to discern by, you know, by definition, the word discern means to perceive by seeing or by hearing. Amen. Therefore, discerning of spirits is the same as seeing or hearing 
in the realm of spirits. I'll say that again. Discerning of spirits is the same as seeing or hearing in the realm of spirits. Amen. Glory to God. And so, therefore, the discerning of spirits actually has a more limited range of operation than the other two revelation gifts. Amen. That being the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And once again, that's because, amen, the discerning of spirit gift is limited to a single class of objects, spirits. Don't, it doesn't deal with people. It deals with spirits. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, the discerning of spirits give us supernatural insight only into the realm of spirits. Amen. And we need to remember the discerning of spirits is seeing and hearing into the spirit world. Amen. Glory to God. It in uh, what in what it does, it, it also reveals, because it's a revelation gift, remember, it reveals the kind of spirit that is in operation behind a supernatural manifestation. We need to understand that because every supernatural manifestation is not of God. A amen. I'll say that again. Every supernatural manifestation is not of God. God. Amen. Glory to God. Very important. Very important. Okay. Now, seeing that we uh, heretofore that we know those of us that's been around for a while uh, and uh, we, we've there's been a lot of misconceptions once again concerning uh, the discerning of spirits. And so sometimes it's best the best way to find out what something is, is to find out what is not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So in our discussion tonight, we're going to limit it to what the discerning of spirits is not. Amen. Glory to God. Now, another thing, uh, well, mo many of you probably heard the word discernment. Amen. He said, somebody might say, I believe I have the gift of discernment. No, that's not an actual a Bible term. Amen. It's not the gift of discernment. It is specifically the discerning of spirits. Amen. It reveals the kind of spirit that is in operation behind a supernatural manifestation. Amen. Glory to God. It get, we get supernatural insight into the spirit world. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It allows you to see or hear in the realm of spirits. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Now. Uh, actually, uh, well, the discerning of spirits dealing with that many times, what people call the gift of discernment, you know, once again, it's really the gift of the word of knowledge in operation, you know, but they miss, they don't under heretofore, they have not understood how the gift of the word of knowledge functions. And they've mis uh, uh, misconstrued that with the discernment of spirits, discerning of spirits. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, people, sometimes people know things by the spirit of God. Amen. Which is a word of knowledge. And they will, they'll, they'll, they'll mislabel that and call it discernment. Amen. But that doesn't mean it's really discerning of spirits just because they call it that. Amen. What it is, once again, is actually a word of knowledge and operation. Also, the discerning of spirits is not, amen, a, a kind of spiritual mind reading. It's not that, amen. The discerning of spirits is not some psychological insight or it, some type of mental penetration, amen. It is not the power to discern the faults, amen, the fallacies of others, amen, glory to God, amen, somebody. We need to understand this because people misunderstand and they misuse, they abuse uh, the spiritual gifts. Amen. Glory to God. That is not what discerning of spirits is. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you, you know, people, uh, anybody can discern faults in somebody. Amen. It, that does not have to be supernatural. So in dealing with, amen, glory to God, the discerning of spirits. Amen. I would remind you of what Matthew chapter seven says. Matthew chapter seven and verse one and two, it says, judge not that ye be not judged. Amen. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Amen. And what with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So so once again, amen, we're the, 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 the discerning of spirits is not some gift to where we start discerning people's faults. 
people's shortcomings. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says we're not supposed to do that. We, I just read that in Matthew chapter seven, verse one. Amen. So, so therefore, amen, the discerning of spirits, amen, is not a spiritual gift to, to uncover human failures. All right. We're not supposed to be doing that. The, according to first Peter four and eight, the Bible says we are supposed to have a charity, fervent charity among ourselves. Amen. Glory to God. That's why a couple of weeks ago I said, when, when I, I see on YouTube, amen, glory to God, preachers just putting preachers down and uh, the devil just has a field day with that. That's something that needs to stop. It says, for the Bible says that charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That's first Peter four and eight. Amen. Glory to God. And when it says charity, it's talking about love. Amen. One And also Ephesians chapter four and verse 32 tells us to be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as uh, God, for Christ's sakes, has forgiven us. Amen. Glory to God. And so this discernment is not the type of gift that we run around fault-finding. Amen. Glory to God. And we, I did, 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 did talk and discerning people's faults. That's not, mm -mm, that's not biblical. Amen. So it's, it's limited to the realm of the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, we as Christians, we should be walking in love toward one another. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, also, what is the discerning of spirits not? Uh, the discerning of spirits is not discerning character faults. Amen. <laughs> it's not that. Amen. It's not even discerning of people. Amen. It's called the discerning of spirits. I, I'm going to say that again. It's called the discerning of spirits. Praise God. In other words, it deals with spirits that exist in the spirit realm. Amen. Watch this. Whether they are from God or divine, whether they are satanic or whether they're human. Amen. I preached a, 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 a couple months ago, and I think I mentioned it on Sunday. When somebody speaks, you need to know, or you, you know, is it from God? Is it the devil? Or is it just from a person? Amen. Glory, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we and we we really need to uh, uh, to understand what we're dealing with. Amen. It's called the discerning of spirits. Amen. Glory to God. Now. Uh, I think I need to interject right now. Uh, the discerning of spirits is not simply discerning of devils. A amen. I remember some years ago, maybe close to, oh, 20 years ago, I would listen to the radio. There was, was a Christian broadcast that would come on. And one guy, I mean, he was, every time you turn around, he was casting a devil out of somebody. He had uh, uh People, they ask, who, what's, the, what's this spirit's name? What's your name? And all this kind of stuff. You know, now I'm not putting this person down. That's why I didn't say his name. But I want to point out that the gift of discerning of spirits is not just the discerning of devils. It's not just the discerning of evil spirits. It's not limited to that realm. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, to, to, to say or to think that the discerning of spirits has only to do with devils is quite misleading. Amen. So the discerning of spirits, that gift has to do with the entire class of spirits, good spirits, bad spirits, human spirits. Once again, it is the supernatural insight into the realm of spirits. Amen. The discerning of evil spirits are in fact included in that realm. And, and, but uh, many times people get out of balance. Amen. They, 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 they think, you know, they've thought that they see demons all the time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And they, get, they can get misled. We need to learn how to maintain a balance. Amen. When we're dealing with demons, amen. Glory to God. Or things that are devilish. We need, we really need to maintain a balance. Amen. And, and uh, oftentimes what we, uh, people get in trouble because uh, they want to, they want to be quick to cast out a devil, and sometimes it's not actually a devil, and it's not what they're trying to cast out is not in line with the word of God. And uh, like I said, and I know for I know from history, uh, um, uh, not personally for myself, but I've heard that from uh, I know that a person attended one of these meetings, and they came back and they was kind of messed up. Amen. Where this person just used to just deal with demons all day long. 
um, service long, just demons, 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 demons. And he, th that person came back and he had some problems. And so we need to maintain balance. Amen. Sometimes what people call the devil, amen, glory to God. It ain't the devil at all. Praise God. Amen. I, I said before people love to blame stuff on the devil that the devil ain't even did. Amen. Glory to God. They're not the devil at all, but in fact, they are in fact the works of the flesh. Amen. If we were to turn, if you would turn with me to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter five. And I know I'm going kind of fast tonight. Glory to God. Galatians chapter five. Amen. And verse 19. Amen. Galatians chapter five, verse 19. I'm reading from the King James Bible. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, let's go to a hypothetical Galatians chapter 5 and verse 21 starts off with the word envyings. Okay? So now, the envy is mentioned in this passage of scripture. And it's not uh, listed as a spirit, but it is in fact listed as a work of the flesh. Alright? So suppose someone has a problem with envy. Huh? Many times somebody might want to cast the devil out of that person. <laughs> Hatred is also mentioned in verse 20. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned once again as one of the works of the flesh, but we wouldn't necessarily cast a demon of hatred out of a person. No, we have to be dealing with the flesh. Amen. And we're told in the word of God how to deal with it. We're told, amen, according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 13, amen, we're told, it says, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And, and also in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5 says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Amen. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It says mortify. In other words, the Bible says we're supposed to render them dead. Amen. Mortify, where we get the word mortician. He deals with dead, he deals with bodies, dead bodies, amen, the mortician, amen, glory to Jesus' name, glory to God, hallelujah, if we've been crucified with Christ, we're supposed to have, we're supposed to crucify this flesh, praise God, amen, we're supposed to work on it, amen, everything is not about casting the devil out, amen, glory to God, amen, somebody, this is very important, amen, but matter of fact, when a person saved, the devil can't be in them in the first place, now, they may be oppressed, amen, by certain spirits, but glory, praise God, amen, glory to God, but, but the devil can't be in them, amen, and oftentimes, what they need is the word of God, amen, glory to God, the Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 32, that we would know the truth, and the truth would make us free. Amen. So we need to be careful. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we need to be scriptural and we need to be believing the truth of God's word. Amen. And we need to practice the truth of God's word. We need to be following carefully what the word of God says. And, and then, then we'll get the, the right type of results. We'll get lasting results. Amen. Glory to God. It's just like any other uh, biblical doctrine. Amen. If you overemphasize any one biblical doctrine, you find yourself 
uh, out of balance. A amen, somebody. You know, you, 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 we have to, we can't just emphasize one doctrine at the exclusion of others. We need balance. Amen. We find, or else we'll find ourselves going to some extremes. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we need to be praying, especially as leaders, that we stay balanced. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. People, amen, get out of balance, amen, where there's individuals that believe, amen, that they preach, they, they, okay, they believe that water baptism, and they preach that you get saved when you get water baptized. That is not biblical, amen, and, to, and, and they emphasize that. They emphasize uh, the water baptism, or they emphasize, amen, a certain formula associated with water baptism, amen, glory to God. And, and we can, if we're not careful, amen, glory to God, we'll distort the, even the purpose of water baptism. Amen. Glory to God. And so we get off kilter. Amen. We need to, we, we, we need to be balanced. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Or else we'll end up doing more harm than good. Amen. And glory, glory to God. We end up walking around believing that everybody got a demon. Amen. In them. And everybody does not have a, dizzy, a demon. Amen. Okay. See, and it's, this, what I'm trying to teach you today is very important because some people become more devil conscious than they are God conscious. Oh, God help me. Come on. Some people become more devil conscious than they are God conscious. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you catch these people that, that are more devil conscious than they are God conscious, they, they, they say some spooky stuff. I'm, I'm serious. They, they, and I hear them. I, when, they, when they say this, this spooky stuff, I know exactly where they're coming. I said, this person right here trying to be ultra this and ultra that. And really, they didn't, they didn't went to the point to where they didn't got religious. Oh, God help me. They didn't got religious. Amen. They become more devil conscious than they are God conscious. We need to be more God conscious than anything. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Or more righteousness conscious than sin conscious. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So as a result of these people becoming more devil conscious than they are God conscious, they <laughs> unaware, they, they give place to the devil. And then he finds a place in their life and he begins to defeat them. Amen. Glory to God. Once again, it's the word that you need. to. Jesus said, you will know the truth. Amen. And the truth will make you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I've said a few minutes ago, amen, many things happen, which people are calling the devil and it is not the devil at all. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Now, it is certainly true that the devil may take advantage of a person or a, or a situation where the works of the flesh are manifested. But if you deal with the flesh, the devil won't have nothing to deal, don't won't have nothing to work with. Come on. If you deal with your flesh, that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> so if you deal, if we deal with our flesh, the devil will not have anything to work with. Amen. Glory to God. If you do what the Bible says, amen, glory to God. What does the Bible says? Let's go to Roman, amen, Romans chapter 12. Amen. Praise God. I give God the praise this evening. Amen. Thank God for you. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we need to present our bodies, our flesh, huh? A living sacrifice, hmm? alive yet dead. In other words, we don't give in to uh, uh, the, works of, uh, the works of the flesh or the impulses. We don't give in. Amen. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you get your mind renewed? How do you get out of the works of flesh? You, you, get, in, you get out of that, amen, glory to God, by meditating, studying, prayer, attending church, amen. These are, there are things that we, we can do, amen, as part, as part of our uh, daily, amen, devotion, amen, glory to God. Praying in the spirit, amen, glory to God. These things, glory to God, uh, help us to renew our mind to the word of God. Amen, glory to God. It says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect 
will of God. Amen. So if we do what the Bible says, amen. And also in Romans chapter uh, six, Romans chapter six. Woo. I'm going to start at, at verse uh, 11. Romans chapter six, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let not sin. In other words, you have the power, but born again, believer, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Huh? Don't let sin be in charge. Let not sin reign in your mortal bodies that ye should or obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Listen to this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if we do these things, the devil won't be able to have any place in us in the first place. Somebody say amen to that. Now, in my closing, amen. Glory to God. Uh, you know, I'm going to cut this off. Because I've got it, I want to. I don't want to go deeper than I need to. I'm gonna pick this up next week. It's it's true, Amen. That there are individuals. I'm being real about it. There's individuals that are bound by the enemy. Mm -hmm. And and of course, once again, any form of bondage is of the devil, either directly or indirectly. But that doesn't always mean that there is a direct presence of an evil spirit, but an evil spirit could be enforcing the problem. Amen. And at times when an evil spirit is the direct cause of a problem, a believer might see the evil spirit that is affecting the situation when the gift of discerning of spirits is in manifestation by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'll say that again. This is good. There's times when an evil spirit is a direct cause of a problem. A believer might see the evil spirit that is affecting the situation when the gift of discerning of spirits is in manifestation by the Holy Spirit. But as we said before, the discerning of spirits encompasses more than just the discerning of evil spirits. Amen. Praise God. I, by way of testimony, uh, years ago, when I first started, amen, uh, preaching, amen, glory to God. I was preaching in downtown San Diego at the, uh, at the mission, amen, at, at the, the, uh, the rescue mission. And, uh, there was this lady that was sitting on the, the front row. When I got up to preach, she was interrupting. And I could see on her. I said, uh-huh. That, that ain't nothing but the devil right there. That, there's a spirit right there just wanting to be disruptive. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything to this woman. For some reason, I, I don't want to say for some reason, the Holy Spirit led me to just stretch my hand out toward her like that. And I just kept on speaking, but I stretched my hand out toward her. Now, everyone else probably didn't even notice it. But what I noticed, it looked like two hands, one went on top of her head and one went under her jaw and went bam. When she went to talk, it shut her mouth. And you can tell her eyes was like, what was that? I'm going to tell you what it was. I discerned that evil spirit. Amen. Go to God. I kept on preaching and just stretched my hand toward it. And, and the Holy Ghost took me, put, put it under arrest. Amen. Glory to Jesus name. There's, there's times I don't, now I'm going to be honest with you. I don't always run around seeing stuff like that. You know, I, my gift is more on a hearing level, you know, th that's, that's more prominent in, in, in my life, more of a hearing, not necessarily a seeing, 
But that time I saw it. There were some other times I saw some things. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So that's the discerning of spirits. Amen. It's limited to the spirit realm. It's not running around judging people. It's not running around fault finding. It's not running around being critical and criticizing our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Because it appears that you know something that they don't know. And, you know, hey, you know, uh, uh, God's going to sort all of this stuff out. What we need to do is stay in our lane. Amen. Glory to God. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, you know, uh, the, the human beings, we're the only ones, the only of God's created creatures. I'll say that, you know, I'll call us a creature. He who's in Christ is a new creature. Amen. Old things passed away and all things become new. We're the only ones that are rebellious. You take a bee. A bee being is part of a colony. It knows that there's drones, there's worker bees, there's the queen, there's all kind of honeybees. If you look and study bees, they have their assignments. Am I right about it? And they do what's best for that bee colony. That's what they do. Amen. That's what they do. Now, you look at ants. There's a scripture that says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. You know, you when you observe ants, they're God's creatures, cre part of his creation. They do what's best for the ant farm. They, they're about their business. But you, you we, we, we are spirit-filled beings. Yes, we're human, but we're spirit-filled. And the, and the purpose of, listen to this. <laughs> There is only one spirit. Let me go back to the word of God. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It said in verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, singular. Okay, the one spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the, the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Huh? Mm-hmm. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For, for, for one is given by the, by the Spirit, the word of knowledge, to another the word of wisdom, by the same Spirit. One, there's only one Spirit. To another faith, by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work is that one and the self same spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. In other words, here's the point, and then we're gonna go home. Put me some music on, make sure we can dismiss you. Amen on in a timely fashion. Amen. Glory to God. Here's the issue. If all of us have the same spirit. We're baptized in the same spirit. Why are we trying to do different things that's not conducive to the health of the kingdom, the health of the body of Christ? Something's wrong. Somebody, somewhere is missing the mark. Amen. Glory to God. We should be submitted to, to God. There's only one spirit. You look at those ants. The Bible says those ants does not have a, a an overseer. They don't have a leader, but they know what they're supposed to do. Amen. We should be knowing what we're supposed to be doing. We should be walking in love toward one another. Come on. We should be praying for one another. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. I feel it now. We should be praying for one another. Amen. We should be encouraging one another. Amen. We should, especially before the world. You can go on YouTube, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. You can just see, uh, anybody can look at that. And they can see, look at the church. The church is all confused. One preacher is talking about this preacher, and that preacher is talking about this preacher, and this preacher over here stole this one. This one ain't doing nothing about money, and this one, look how big his house. This house is big as the White House. All of this kind of stuff. And the thing is, the world is not even having to expose this stuff. The church is doing it to its own self. Come on. The, to me, there's enough, there's enough subject matter in this word i'm gonna go deep as a matter of fact as preachers and teachers this is what we're supposed to be teaching people the word of god 
what does the word say? Because we're, we are citizens of a kingdom and we need to understand the mind of the king. Come on. We need to understand the king's purposes, the king's priorities, the king's prerogatives. Come on. We need to be understanding that and that's what we should be moving forward, going forth with in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise right now. I give you glory. I exalt your name. God, I thank you that you're a holy God. I thank you that you're a righteous God. I thank you that you're a merciful, loving God, long-suffering toward us, very patient with us, oh God. God, even as I teach, Father God, help us, Father God, to not be uh, critical of one another. Help us to understand this gift, the discerning of spirits, that it is, it is primarily, exclusively, for the understanding, for the discerning of spirits, O oh God, and not to be critical on each other, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So God, I just pray for the body of Christ. I pray for Bethesda. I pray for our loved ones. I pray, I pray, I pray, Father God, that we would take these truths and apply them to our lives, that we would make the necessary adjustments, O oh God, within us, O oh God, that we would not be like the world, God, speaking negative on each other, backstabbing each other, just talking about each other, bringing each other down. But God, help us, God, to just know, Lord God, that you love us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and we should love our neighbor as ourselves. I bless you right now, Father. I speak it forth right now. I speak the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, oh God, to manifest itself in the hearts of your people, God. Let us not be discriminatory. Father God, help us, Lord God, not to be ju all judicial. Lord God, help us, God, to, regardless of a person's nationality or ethnicity, God, whether how much money they have, how much they don't have, help us to just walk in love and be obedient and led by your spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Have your way in the church. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you. Hallelujah. We yield to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. I praise you for doing it, O oh God. I thank you, Lord. I believe I receive it. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, beloved, that's all I have for tonight. Next week, we're going to go back into the discerning of spirits, and we're going to deal with the fact that with the discerning of spirit, you can see the similitude of God. You can see Christ, amen, with this gift of the whole, uh, of the discerning of spirits, amen. We're going to go into the uh, Old Testament. We're going to go in the Bible. We're going to go deeper into this, amen. But we just want to say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Remember, tomorrow we will be praying at 12 noon via Zoom, amen. Thursday, we have our food distribution ministry. Friday at 7 p.m., we will be praying once again via Zoom. And we will see you on Sunday. We're going to be taking communion. I'm going to be teaching on communion. And we just say, God bless you in the name of Jesus. We want you to stay safe. Amen. Glory to God. We want you to continue to pray. We want you to continue to seek the face of God. Continue to commune with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want you to continue doing that. Bless God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, beloved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's all I have tonight. Amen. Glory to God for you. Amen. And we say, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. And we can't wait to see you face to face. And this is how we do it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You be blessed and stay safe. Amen. In Jesus' name.